One of the customs of the Noble Ones is to delight in developing and delight in abandoning. The abandoning is something we'd like to, de to find easy. In other words, just let go and you're okay. There's a picture of the path that's very attractive. All you have to do is be in the present moment, which is where you already are. Be mindful, which is what you already are. But just do it more consistently and you'll find that the defilements just float away, the incredible lightness of defilement. It's a nice picture, but it doesn't really correspond to anything. And what it says are actually five steps to letting go. So you're going to let go of a defilement or let go of your attachment to, a, to the aggregates. And the first step is seeing the origination of what it is you want to let go of. And that doesn't just mean seeing it arising. You have to see how it arises, what gives rise to it. And as you've, if you've had any experience with science, you know that you don't understand causes unless you fiddle around with uh, potential causes. And this is what we do as we develop the path. We take these aggregates that we're going to be letting go of, but we first have to make them into a path before we understand them. You focus on the form of the body, the way you feel it from within, particularly you focus on the, the breath. Breathe in a way that nourishes your sense of the body as you feel it from within, that wakes things up inside. So you begin to get more and more sensitive to what's going on in your arms, in your legs, and in your head, in your torso, all around. And you want to do this in a way that gives rise to a feeling of pleasure. So ask yourself what kind of breathing would feel good right now. You have the choice. Long breathing, short breathing, fast breathing, slow breathing, deep, shallow, heavy, light. You have lots of choices. And developing means to exercise those choices, to find out what's just right. That's the feeling aggregate. Perception is the perception of the breath you hold in mind. You can think of the air coming in out of the lungs, or you can think of the breath as an energy that runs through all the nerves of the body, runs through all the blood vessels, out to every pore. You can think of the breath as a dimension that's not, not even in, encased in the solid part of the body. It's one aspect of physicality right here that you could focus on without having to surround it with a sense of the solid body. That's another perception you could hold. There are lots of different perceptions that are possible. And you want to ask yourself, what is the perception that's most conducive for the mind to settle down right now? Then there's fabrication, which in this case is directing your thoughts to the breath and then evaluating it. How is it going? That long breathing. Does it really feel good? Or could it use a little adjustment? When you found something that does feel good, how do you maintain it? And as you maintain it, how do you allow it to spread? So the sense of well-being fills the body. That internal conversation is an aspect of fabrication. And then there's consciousness. Your awareness of all these things as it's going on. So there we are. I've got the five aggregates that are creating your sense of the, the body right here, right now, your awareness of the body right now, and also turning into a state of right concentration. You want to get good at this. That's the origination part of the, the very first step of learning how to let go. And if you see anything unskillful coming up, that's when you want to watch. When it comes, why does it come? When it goes, why does it go? Because you understand causality not only by giving rise to things, but also realizing that the times when you can't give rise to them, where you give rise to them and they fall apart. 
And so you do your best to get the good things to stay and allow the, good, the bad things to go away, all of which is a process of developing. It's then that you apply the, the analysis of passing judgment on something, whether it's worth holding on to or not. In the beginning, you don't let go of everything. The Thai Johns talk about the various dangers of the practice, and one of them is just deciding that, okay, I'm going to give up on concentration. I've seen that there's some pleasure there, but I'm not going to allow myself to get stuck on it, so I just won't do it anymore. That doesn't get you anywhere. You have to keep at it again and again and again. You've got to hold on. You've got to keep developing it if you really want to master it. If you really want to understand it. Because with no understanding, there is no letting go. And as you're working on the concentration, you try to let go of other things. Any other thoughts that might come up, that's what you, when you apply the, the next part of the analysis, is after you've seen things arising and passing away, or being originated and passing away. You look at the way they have their allure. Why do you go for them? When that thought of tomorrow's meal comes up, why do you go for that thought? When the thought of today's meal, this morning's meal comes up, why do you go for that thought? Or the thought that after the meditation is over, I'm going to go lie down and have a nice, soft place to stay. Why do you go for that thought? What's the allure? And then you can compare that with the drawbacks of going for that kind of thinking. Right now that kind of thinking is not going to help you along the path. That's the main drawback. It's the kind of thought that you've had many, many times before. How about doing something different with the mind? Something that would lead to a pleasure that, that's more solid. And see so if you can see the, the thought that's pulling you away as a fabrication, something that part of the mind is actually creating. Then you can apply that analysis to it. Here, here's the thought. You don't have to create the thought. There may be an initial impulse that comes from your past karma. But that doesn't mean you have to pick up the impulse and run with it. So there you are, you're seeing the origination. What is it that makes you go for it? And does the thought stay there solidly? You begin to see that it comes and goes, comes and goes. And when you pick it up again, why did you pick it up again? What's the allure? And what are the drawbacks of that kind of thinking? It would be easier just not to do that kind of thinking. It's in this way that you find the escape. The letting go comes from dispassion. You've seen that you've had enough of this. The steps the Buddha gives in dispassion, the first one is what he calls nibhidha, which means disenchantment. It's the aspect of the mind or the attitude of the mind when you've had a certain kind of food and you've had enough. It loses its appeal. After all, clinging is a kind of feeding. And when you can finally see, oh, this really doesn't have any appeal, then there's dispassion. Now, because we've been creating these things through our own intentions, through our own fabrications. And what is fabrication based on? It's based on passion and desire. And so we can end the passion. The fabrication stops, and then you're freed. That's how you let go. It's not just telling yourself to let go. But it's looking at something carefully enough to see how it arises and why it arises, the extent to which you're implicated in these things coming. It's not just you're sitting there watching a TV show that's been totally designed for you. You're also the director. You're the actress, the stage manager. You play a role in creating these things. That's why when you see that the effort you've put into this is not really worth it, when it really hits home, that's when you let go. And you don't have to tell the mind to let go at that point. Let us go on its own. 
So in the meantime, the path is worth constructing. It is worth putting together. You're going to learn from it. So put it together well. Develop it well. And as you do that, you learn a lot about the process of fabrication, how the mind shapes its experience, and how it's been doing it in a sloppy way. So the developing is the matter of learning how to fabricate your experience with skill. And with the skill then comes even greater mastery. When you say, well, this is as far as fabrication can go, what's better than this? When you develop that sense of disenchantment through comparing the allure and the drawbacks, that's when that something better appears. So it's not just a matter of letting go, letting go. You've got to develop things first to understand why you're not letting go of them. You have to understand this process of fabrication. That's one of the Buddha's most radical insights, is that not that reality is conditioned, reality is fabricated, i.e. it's fa fabricated your sense of your reality as you experience it. It's fabricated through your intentions, not out of thin air. It has to use the building blocks of old actions. But there's an awful lot of fabrication going on right now that's below the surface that you want to dig up. You can't just let go of the results of fabrication as they come up. You have to let go of the process itself. And so to let go of that process, you have to dig down deep inside to see where is this process happening? How is it happening? And by developing the path, particularly developing right mindfulness, right concentration, you get hands-on experience with that process. And when, when you know it in that way, as the Buddha says, when you touch it with your body, when you see it with your body, in other words, it's an experience right here, right now, in your embodied experience. That's when you can see through it and let it go.